A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan is brought to you by Gringo Slocos, the award-winning taco and official taco of everything Tom and Dan. Go to gringoslocos.com and get you some tacos. Also brought to you by Secured Roofing and Restoration. For your free estimate on your roof, go to securedroofingandrestoration.com. Now, enjoy the show. Ground floor, lobby, going up. Hey, I uh, got some uncomfortable business later. I got to fire Canadian Josh. Uh, Why? Wait, because it's just uh, I, I did the polls with the listeners yeah. and they, uh, they, they, uh, they don't like it. Yeah, hey, it's El not Stinko. trending well. Yeah. Yeah, disgust El Barfo. That's what they said. <laughs> I don't know how to break it to them. 69th floor, penthouse, corporate offices, studio. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a corporate time. With Tom and Dan. I don't know a corporate time with Tom and Dan. Tom and Dan, welcome back to the program, Canadian Josh. And here they are, the Little Mermaid and Aladdin of Radio. Tom and Dan! Welcome to a Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I didn't know we were starting the show. Mm. Totally thought we were coming back from it. That's fine. Mm. That's me. That's fine. I'm Dan. I see things differently. <laughs> Nobody really cares about the intro, I feel. Like, I don't think uh, they do either. Yeah. They just want you to like start, like immediately just start doing Hello. the show. Yeah. Hi. Because they know who we are at this point. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they do. They've got to. I don't even know who I am at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Tom. Anybody out there? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. Is anybody even listening to this? Um, <laughs> if you're yeah. listening, tweet us. Oh, oh, it's called the Flipboard TV. Home of George St. Pierre. Tom's pop up called it gay. I feel like we already can't say that anymore. <laughs> that was uh, 2019. It was a different time. It, it was. It's already aged poorly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, 2021, this, this is not This tweet did not hold up. No, no, no. no this is no. worse than uh, Watson. But it will come back again. <laughs> no. but worse than Watson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not oh, The more I dig into that, the more I'm just horrified. <laughs> 42. 42. Now, some of them said that they're oh, fine. No, no, no. But what's the some 20, of them are not. 22 of them. Are not, yes. Like, whatever it is. It's bad. It's like, you, bro, you got a problem. <laughs> like, there's, something, there's a problem <laughs> That's here. the way to say it, yeah. There's, yeah, you, no there, matter what This is, is an addiction But at this how point. many do you go to that you're like, how many do you? Why not just find the one that was cool with it and stick with her? There it is. That's the problem. Anyway, sorry, Josh. Yeah, but you don't like it when she's cool with it. You no, like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. That's the yeah. You want to hate it because you're sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, yeah. That's right. the problem. Because that's you the true problem. You're sick. That's sick. Chop you're his, sick. Chop his head off and study it. Right. <laughs> that's what you got to do. That what that's what they're doing now with that other, that other football guy. player. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think they do it like the way I envision it is large scimitar. Sick. And then it falls, rolls, and then they pick it up, put it in a burlap bag. That's what you'd have then, to do. Yeah, you ride your horse to the... <laughs> I think they still need that for to like uh, testing for rabies. Like they have to chop an animal's head off yeah. or something, right? Something yeah, like I had to do it with a Maisie's hamster. You'd think a simple blood test. Anyway, sorry, Josh. Yeah, we can do 23 and me, but you got to chop the hamster's head off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Like what? You can't take his blood? Yeah. No. All right. Sorry, Josh. They got those new little prick things, too. Like, they got this new thing that's like, oh, I get bloated every time I eat. And then you take this little thing that looks like a vape pen, and you stick it on your thumb, and I guess it's like a prickless, like you're pricking your thumb, and then you send it away, and then they send you, these are the foods you can eat, and I'll get bloated. You can't oh. do that to the hamster. You can't do that to the dog, the little dink, just a little dink, and There's I send it away, and then you're like, yes. Yeah. Saw his head off? Yeah, he has, he had, well, what if you do the dink, right? You do the little yeah. blood test, you send it away, and then they write you back, they're like, your dog does, in fact, have rabies. Now you have to chop his head off. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The chopping well, wasn't for the study, and it was just because that dog's got rabies, chop his head off. It's crazy. Well, it's bad if you chop your dog's head off, and then they say, no rabies. rabies. <laughs> like, oh. You well, did not need well, to do Well, where do I go from here? I have a claim. Be like, uh, it looks like you <laughs> held him down too. Yeah. Like he was mad. Yeah, that, that's not a clean chop. That's a. There's yeah. a lot of. 
Sorry, Josh. How you doing? You just, you just pulled the bone <laughs> off at the end. You didn't even. You did that move like my dad does when he's eating chicken, where you just break it and rip. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's it been going in Canada, Josh? Things are going good up here. Uh, this uh, this segment's brought to you by the Little Cheese Show. Um, mm. Now, I've learned quite a few things over the last few weeks producing the Little Cheese Show. And I've actually grown quite a bit of sympathy and or empathy for Samantha. Because it turns out keeping a, a bunch of 13-year-old boys on track with scheduling and recording podcasts is hard. So, Sam, right. I can imagine this is how you feel with these guys. Yeah, Very it's difficult. about the same. It's about mm, the same. Yeah, it's I worse. Got a, it's I worse got a, with us. We're on drugs. Yeah, we're on You're drugs and we're, right. we're violent. Yeah, I'm more like, uh, I'm more like a 16-year-old with rabies. i got to chop my head off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, all I do is Minecraft masturbate. That's we're all on, I want to do. We're on drugs. Yeah. We're violent and yeah. uh, horny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Violently every horny. Time, it's a bad combo. Every time Sam's like, you need to do your... Josh is doing an interview. Get in there. And I'm like, you're not the boss of me. And we, we don't like the ones that like it. We, yeah, you know, we're we know like, what that means. Uh, worse than Watson. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. So, uh, so it's a pain in the ass. I, yeah, I can't imagine. I tell my son, my sons, they want to do YouTube playing video games because that's what yeah. they see. And they're like, that's we the want dream. the likes. We want the... Dude, Maisie started doing exercise videos. No, she you... goes up to the fourth floor. She takes my Peloton weights out of the bike. Brings them downstairs, dresses in a leotard, puts a, sets her iPad up, and then does like, <laughs> she's like, hi, I'm Maisie, this is, a, and she does a workout. But is she recording it? Yeah, uh, on her iPad. Yeah. Thankfully, it has no internet on it. Oh, and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, can't yeah. go anywhere with the videos, but they're on there. Yeah, and then, so I'm like, well, you could do that, you just have to figure out how to do it. Like, I don't know how to do it, your old man is a dumb they, old man. Dude, they know how to do it. If Maisie knows how to do it, they know how to press record on no, their no, iPad. No, and, no, they want to upload yeah. it to their own YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, just, but, you gotta fake that part you well, can't let them get on there I, no don't let your babies on there well to me i'm like if you can figure it out that's then you do it like if, uh, okay, if that's fair but they're just like everybody they don't want to do the work no, that's they fair. just want the that's called the poly likes. shore yeah, it's like yeah, i got yeah, a yeah, million yeah. podcast <laughs> ideas you need to do it for me so josh when it comes to the actual work and like hey you have to do this on a schedule you have to go they then they're out right yeah, exactly. It's like it's almost once they start telling them they have to do it, then it, then it's kind of become homework at that yeah, point. But they're doing good. Out of it. They're so yeah. having fun. Yeah, it's like this show. Like we used to be a hobby. Yeah, yeah. And then it used one, to be fun. We used to talk yeah, to each five other. Days a week. Honestly, I I realize now. Like it's. I told Andrea yesterday. Observations. We used to love coming in here. Now we come in and we just sit in silence. Yeah, yeah. Then that's what I like. I'm like now it, everybody's miserable. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom <laughs> likes it. He comes in and gives me the one yo. I don't like when the, people's hat or they're happy yeah. at work. He comes in and he's like stupid. yo. And I and I knew today sitting at my computer, I was like, I'm gonna sit in the room with him. But I'm not going to say a word to him. And I had to fight not doing small talk with Tom. And I don't even know what you're doing over there because I think if I look over my shoulder, you're going to think I'm checking up on you. If everybody's too happy at work, something's <laughs> something's going wrong. Like something's Butler's not right. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, it's like, He's too happy. You got to be miserable like the rest of us. Uh, if if <laughs> you're happy. Yeah. Of people being miserable, Tom, at work. I sent you guys a clip of an NHL referee. Now, I think we've talked about, we stumbled upon a random one before about NHL referees. If they make good money, they make like between 190 and 220,000 a year, but this ties in many different aspects. So you guys have been audio men your whole life. Have you guys ever had or seen witness firsthand a true hot mic incident where it's like, oh no, that microphone was on? Like yes. anything ever happened with you guys? Yes, I have a I have a very good one. I was at the Daytona Beach Ocean Center watching wrestling, and it was an infamous match where Hulk Hogan was going to lose and give up the belt, and he didn't want to do it. So he flipped and went off script rogue and started cursing out the audience. <laughs> and it was and it was as bizarre as it sounds. It was extremely bizarre. It's crazy. I believe he called somebody there an MF or something. It was very weird. I I think I was And he wasn't supposed to do it. At some sort of gala or awards or something, some show, someone had a lapel mic, and then I remember the production crew or the cameraman laughing because someone was doing the pee pee in the oh, bathroom. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't blasted live. It was just they were laughing. It's not a big deal if no you no, know, no yeah. if uh, like you say Steve Aoki's playing over it, you're not going to hear my yeah, pee pee. Yeah. But I've never seen the public hot mic. 
Not remember that documentary with the like the guy who was con- like or uh, they thought he murdered someone and then he went into the bathroom and he's like, oh, <laughs> and they, I forgot. Yes. What was that guy's name? Yeah, and he was like, oh god, I killed him. Okay, they know whatever. You know, what I'm like he did. And then they had that. Oh, audio. I, don't, I don't remember. The <laughs> it, it was a documentary about this crazy guy that they suspected he killed these people. I think it's called uh, he's a, Killed yeah. Them All. He's a, Robert Durst. Yeah, Robert Durst. It yes. was the Robert Durst story. And HBO documentary. Documentary saying to himself, uh, what the hell did I do? Killed them all, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was in the bathroom, like, just splashing water on did his face. Did he kill them all? Yes, well, I think, why, why would you say that? Like, I don't say that in the bathroom. I, every time I go to the bathroom, I look in the mirror wash, while I'm washing my hands, 20 seconds. Yeah. You know, because you got to kill the germs. And I say, what have you done? You killed them all. <laughs> and it's just That's positive thinking. Yeah. It's positive thinking. You have to put it into the universe to make it happen. So, sorry, Josh. So, yeah, this NFL That's okay. referee. So, yeah, this or was, uh, this was an NHL referee. His name it happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, his name's Tim Peel, and um, so now, uh, in the last couple of years, they just started doing this in the NHL where, uh, like the NFL, referees will call the penalty. So they'll blow the whistle, and then they'll come over in front of the camera and say, number 47, Colorado. That's an ego sticking. thing. That's an ego thing. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, they started doing that, and I'm not a big fan of it, but so... In sports, you guys are probably aware, sometimes refs will do what they call game management, where, oh, man, I called a bad penalty against those guys. I'm going to kind of make up for here. It's it's well known that happens in hockey. Yeah, but it's well known in soccer, too. Peel, yeah, it, like, they, they, they try to even yeah, it out, yeah. the it, unfairness. Uh, in yeah. soccer and hockey, it has always been the case, and it will always yeah, exactly. be the case. Yeah. But unfortunately, Tim Peel got caught admitting to that, basically, with his mic open. <laughs> he should not have been on. And Dan, yeah, you can roll down. All Larry right. Says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head over here so we can see this. Here we go. This is uh, NHL. Yeah, so this was uh, Detroit against uh, Nashville. All right. You make it the time that the offense takes place, and then if you don't, then that's it. I don't think it's fair, you know, to the other team. I think that, you know, the game should be played, you know, truthfully. A referee has been banned from working NHL games after he let it slip over the airwaves that he was looking to call a penalty against the Nashville Predators. And now the hot mic situation has brought with it mixed reaction from players and fans about the role of makeup calls in sports. This is the video. A replay between the Detroit Red Wings and Nashville Predators. A voice is heard saying, It wasn't much, but I wanted to get a f- penalty against yeah, Nashville early in the... That was 53-year-old that- NHL <laughs> yes. referee. Oh, man. Oh, no. Poor guy. Oh. He's a real man, too, because the hockey referees, I imagine, are the toughest of all referees. Um, yeah, for like 20-plus years, and he was just like... And what's crazy about it, too, you hear in the background, it's either the linesman or the referee. He's like, no, I know that wasn't a penalty, but I wanted to effing get a penalty against Nashville early. The guy with him was like, yeah, I know. So it's like, it's known that this happens. Yeah, and, and you know what's a shame? It's it, This is the divide between the fan and the, the, the how the organization works, right? And, like, the reality of it, right? So We all know the reality. We, we want to sit back and think that all this is, uh, like, scientific to the point. It's like everything's fair. All the procedures are exactly even. But the reality is there's subjectivity in this. There's, you know, referees that kind of have to even yeah, out the game. You want it to be fair, you know, but you do. There's humans involved, so there's going to be error, and, and the refs are just trying to make it as f- not lopsided as possible, mm-hmm. right? And this has been going on for years. You're managing. And because of technology and mics and things, like, this gets out, which is a well-known thing that the whole... Everybody knows is going on. Even the players are fine with it. Like, they, they understand this is the way... And this guy's got to be fired because the organization can't admit that this happens because people, the fans would go crazy. They'd be like, wait a minute. It's not cut and dry. Like, if there's there, now, these what, people have a, what, a say. What do you say, Josh, as the avid, you know, hockey man? What do you say about people? I am? Um, yeah, I am surprised that the I'm surprised how hard of a stand the NHL took on it. And like there was it was within 24 hours of that game being over. They were like done fired 100 percent like i i i figured there'd be some sort of follow but they were like no he's gone we're, we're getting rid of him and like i wonder like if you guys do you think something in soccer or uh football would it, do you think the league would react that is that harsh 
You, oh yeah! If this happened in the NFL, they the, those referees yeah, be fired because they, they, could, fire him. they do this with pass interference in the NFL. Like the the the. the the game referees collectively kind of understand like what the vibe of the game is. And like they, they, that's why you see them so, yeah. conversing and managing. And, and, and this happened last year, and it was not talked about that much. But in the NFL, they loosened the holding penalties at the beginning of COVID because it, they they wanted to make it like let everybody play more and let scoring happen. And like they, they were worried because there's no audience that it would be less of a product. So they they the the the, the NFL told the referees blatantly it seemed like like hey call less holding penalties let the game play well, let me- so scoring you know and then we don't want to look at that and and know that that happens because it kind of takes away the purity of the game for the audience yeah. right like i'm just now getting into hockey right like this will be like my second season of like watching does it change if the game has always been played this and this is how the refs have managed the game and to a certain extent the NHL has leaned on referees to do this right they have but they have to yeah because they So what so once you've done this it, are you changing everything now? Because the, it, 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 am I correct in thinking as a new fan Josh that the only yeah. reason this guy got fired is because he got caught had he known it's not one hundred percent? Well, yeah. not not only they got caught, but he said it, yeah, and the, the, the audience and heard it. You can do, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because the audience heard it. Then there's then they have to fire him, but but they know it happens, right. And it has to happen because it, there's humans involved, and there's no way to make it exactly unless like, you want to go to all cameras and robots and sensors. Yes, yeah. I and mean, the, you can do that. The game's too keep fast. The human factor, yeah. Nobody's gonna do that. Though. You you think in the EPL and the NHL, you which couldn't. are the two. I would use as the biggest examples. There's no way that those audiences are ever going to want to go to sensors and bells and whistles and lines and cameras. Well, Josh, let's talk about that. Because of the in, the way the game is played, you can't do it. Like in basketball and the NFL, there's breaks and you can check the tape during the breaks. Like obviously every play in the NFL, you could go back the and The pacing's different. You can he, send it to New York if you need to, See right? if he went out of bounds and stuff because there's a break in the play no yeah. matter what. It's a natural and hockey now, and soccer just there's no break. So if you started to say, wait, yeah. let's check the tape, it would slow down the entire game and right. well you can't do that in hockey and soccer. They're too quick. In yeah, football, yeah. you can have they'll even in my stupid Madden game, they'll go, Oh, it looks like New York's checking that call to see if they got it right. You know, like it's insane. Yeah, and there's a there's one that's in the NHL now, and it's it's the offside rule. So if a goal scored, um, as those as the team that scored entered the uh, entered the offensive zone, they, if they were offside, that goal will be disallowed. And sometimes you watch these guys passing, they're coming across the blue line. It is like right centimeters, millimeters, and so sometimes the the play will move in. A bunch of plays will happen. Team will score. Oh, but wait a second. Somebody reviewed, somebody for the other team reviewed that stupid offside. And for the sake of two millimeters, the whole game is put on pause while it's reviewed, 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 reviewed. The guy scored a legitimate goal, but now it's not allowed because that stupid offside uh, rule. And where it's so minuscule, that I mean, uh, the sentiment here is that let's get rid of it. You know yeah. what? It's the human factor. It's the referees. Let's get rid of it and just let them play. Yeah, we don't... I don't see that much in soccer. Offside is one where I feel like they still abuse it, and you'll still see things... You know, occasionally you'll see it called, but I don't think I've ever seen, like, the MLS. Like, I, I'll use American soccer. I've never seen MLS or Don Garber or anybody uh, call back a, an offsides call. Usually that's let go. If that's what they're doing in hockey now, I think that's pretty bad. You it, can't do that. It, yeah, it, it's got to go. It, it, I bet you there's a lot of this stuff in other sports. Like, I'm thinking, like, I bet you there's umpires in baseball that would say, like, there's some pitches that I blinked or I, I, I wasn't paying attention and I just had to make a call and I just called. Which one do you think's the hardest? <laughs> what, the, or as far as what? Being well, an umpire? I, I, well, I'm trying to think of, like, if you were going to go into a field and uh, yeah, fo- and we were going to rank them, I, I, what, which one would be the hardest to do? Well, NFL is getting pretty technical where, like, it seems like it's almost impossible to call uh, pass interference or, like, because... It changes a lot. 
but at least they can review it. So they have a backup. They make a call, and then it's wrong. They'll review it, overturn it, whatever. Their system's in place. With these kind of sports, like there's, it happens all the time. Well, they'll review it after the game's over, and they'll be like, this guy got it wrong, and this guy changed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then it's way harsher. The NFL at least has the, like, but because it's the way the game's played, they'll have a uh, a way to right the wrong, right? Right, right. And there's been plenty of games that have been literally changed by refs, uh, and well, the winner has changed. Well, in, in a weird aside, you and I used to see it when we were working Orla- Orlando City matches, especially in lower leagues. You would see referees dole out penalties you know, right there on the sideline, and you knew it was a harsh penalty, and you were just waiting to get it back later, and you would. Yeah, Typically, yeah. You would get, we'd get it back as the team. You'd see, like... You know, they'd Kaka even, would muscle somebody in there, and, and you'd be like, "Oh, that's a yellow," and they'd let it slide. You'd be like, "Okay, well now it's even." even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, Josh, you got another story? Yeah, um, Tom. What's the most expensive fishing trip you ever went on? Uh, the reason I ask you that is because there is a uh, bunch of anglers from the U.S. that came up, and they were fishing off the coast of Vancouver Island. Apparently, they've been doing this for a couple of years now, um, but it was well known that these guys were, let's say, in American fashion. Uh, turning their nose up at the rules. Uh, so anyway, after a lengthy, lengthy investigation, the three individuals that they caught were charged with $70,000 worth of fines for illegally fishing salmon up here in uh, British Columbia. Oh, my God. Seventy grand. Wow. Um, now... <laughs> I'm sick of salmon. They, like, I know. It's good, but man, it's, I'm sick of it. I've heard the stories, and it seems like they they will make it a point or make an example of you. Like, the FWC, like, for lobster season down here in Florida, or, like, People get snook, or, like, if you are catching something and keeping undersized fish, yes. like, the they'll, uh, they'll you find up. you every fish. So, like, lobster, if you have undersized lobster, I don't know what the fine is, but it's expensive, and it can be like I've heard of stories where people they've oh, caught they them with putting you in the paper fifty thousand dollars <laughs> worth of fines yes. and they will straight up put your ass in jail if mm-hmm. you you know like they, they do not f around with the FWC here in Florida. Um, so now if these people are stinking rich, then it really doesn't matter, right? But uh, I, I'm sure seventy grand for some salmon stings anybody, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and these guys are, it seems like they didn't have a lot of money. And, and what got them, so like you said, they get you for every one. Like they had it broken down to 26 Chinook salmon, 18 rockfish fillets, eight ling cod fillets, and 10 bags of salmon row that weighed 24 kg. So they had it itemized right down to it. But the big one is the law is here. If uh, you get caught with this type of violation, they seize all your equipment. So Ooh. your boat, your motor, your gear, and, and we're talking, this was like a 35 foot. Giant fishing boat with like you know two three hundred horsepower. They do that here. Uh, so, the six figure boat. Well, they'll take your boat here yeah, yeah, if yeah. you do that. That's very popular. It it seems like not worth it for twenty five salmon or whatever. Like twenty five salmon exactly. Now now well, what are you try? Are, are at that point are you really trying to go after the value of the twenty five salmon? You're just trying to get away with really. Yeah, you're trying, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah because, you didn't think it out. Well, they probably been doing it for fifteen years, years and yeah. never been caught. It's one of those things like where, and then the hot mic and then. Thing, you know, you're yes, fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> they're just like the hockey guy. Yeah, you would think that the hockey guy would, he would know he how serious they take the, uh, like, not leaking out this information, and you would never mention it. It's kind of like in radio. Me and Daniel knew. Don't swear, yeah. That the, the way you get fired in radio is leaving your mic on during the break and then playing some porno. You how or crazy I was about the mic. I would yell. Yeah. Well, that's how everybody we heard getting fired. They're like, up, oh, left the mic on, cursed, got fired. I would yell at people and I would hit the mics with my four fingers like I'm playing piano. I would go like, kang, 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 and I'd yeah, hit yeah. them again. <laughs> yeah, you're paranoid. Make, because yeah. sometimes the stupider members of the shows I was working on would turn their mics back on because they just see a light turn on. They're like, ooh, light. <laughs> Turn it out. Yeah. I'm like, no, turn it off. <laughs> Who was that? Yeah, well, he wore a hat. <laughs> so, and I love him. I love him, but he wore a hat. We would e- I would be nervous about <laughs> yelling curse words during the break, even in a room full of mics that we I thought were off, because I was like, man, all it takes is one mic being on and then I'm fired. It's like, it's not worth it. Just go, when you're cursing, do it away it's, from the it's mic. It's like the amount of trust you have, too, because at any point in time, I could have taken every fader to the moon oh, yeah. and turned them all on. I told and you to do that. Out. Yeah, you did. I'm, I'm like, the whole, they ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> the whole. Anyway. Um, 
What was the story about? <laughs> <laughs> salmon. Salmon. All oh, salmon. Salmon. Yeah. Seventy thousand dollar fine for catching salmon. Ooh, and you lost your boat. Do you get the like? I know they seize it, but can you pay a small penalty and you get it back, or is that it? I think it goes to auction once that's it. With the, it now belongs to the government. Well, do you get? Can you do jail time? Damn, can, can you get to a point where you have like yeah, you're, you're fish, poaching so much salmon that they're <laughs> oh, like, yeah, this yeah. goes beyond. Well, it could be seventy thousand. This goes beyond taking your boat. You it's are now going time. to jail yeah, yeah, because yeah, you stole salmon. Yes, repeat offender. It's the judge has the uh, the either going to sentence you to a fine or the jail time because it, they all say like this is subject to a five thousand dollar fine or, or jail time. six months. Jail, I would not want to go to jail for Salmon Row. I but, think jail in Canada is fine, though, right? I don't know. But the judge would rather have the money if these guys got rich because they it's, it's they let murderers go. It's easier <laughs> or better for the the country for them just to get the money than put a bunch of rich guys in jail. You know, I know I nothing about Canada, and I hear just that the people are sweet, and my neighbors are Canadian, mm-hmm. and they're sweet. That's as far as I ever go. I leave it there. That's the story you need to go, but yeah, you don't I need never. Any more than that. I heard the strip clubs are good. I heard the syrup, and toonies. Mer, uh, maple <laughs> candies are good. I heard that. That's about as far as I go. You know who's got it easy is the mammal hunters, and I'll explain. Is because there are the same fines for like deer and elk and stuff, but it's just usually you get one. So you're like the fish and the lobster and all yeah. that. Like you have dozens, <laughs> yeah. and then they compound it's right. That, yeah. The elk, like well, you, then we need to even it out because what it, one yeah. deer. Should equal twenty seven salmon. I know, but it doesn't work like that. Oh, well, then like, we got to fix that. One deer is like so. Dude. It should go by weight, is what you're saying, Dan? Right? Yeah, like, yeah, like those whatever phrases, what the weight of the meat is, you took. It's, yeah, there's an equation to that. Like yeah. I'm, Tom and I are massive fans of these restaurants that charge you by the pound. So when you go there, they weigh you to see what you weigh, and they charge you to go in there, and then it's all you can eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also, I've always been that. It's like if that lobster tail is half an inch under the legal limit, like you get popped for it. I feel like it should go up the smaller it is. Like a little baby lobster should Face be the biggest case. crime, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. It's like half an inch is the same fine as uh, like yeah. a five inches. Like a short. baby lobster, there should be billboards that said it had a heartbeat at three. You know, like, I mean, the whole yeah. nine. Yeah. Like, that is a crime. But a big fat old ass, a hundred year old lobster been floating around. Nobody wants to eat that stanky ass tail anyway. If you have any hail damage on your car, any scratches or dents, or you curbed your rims, you got to talk to our friends at All Pro Dent Removal. Yeah, it's exactly who I used. I curbed my rims two days after purchasing a new car. It was driving me crazy. Corey and his team took care of me. I mean, they had me in and, in and out in 15 minutes. Yep, 18 years of experience. Most jobs can be done in one day. No paint, so you keep the value in your car. Call them, 352-988-7825. Just give them a call at 352-988-7825. It's all pro dent removal. They'll reimburse all customers' deductibles. It's all pro dent removal. You've been working in the yard a lot, you know, out there with your plants. Go by SixFlagsMulch.com. Yeah, whether you need mulch, you need topsoil... I'm going to go get some potting soil. I'm going to bring my son so he can feed the koi they oh, got totally there. totally family friendly. They've got uh, also painted rocks. You can do a search of that if you're a child. Yep. Uh, all the water features, the aquascape water features there. It's easy to find. They're right there in Longwood. It's SixFlagsMulch.com. In two weeks, corporate will be visiting our main conference room. Please dress appropriately. The fact that your sandals have a back strap does not make them business casual. Thank you. It's a corporate time with Tom and Dan. Um, all right, next story. <laughs> I was on the Bubba the Love Sponge show thanks to Tuttle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Why, why did that happen? What happened? <laughs> it happened. So Tuttle went, you guys still do, you guys uh, talk to Tuttle once a month, I think. And, no, um, no, no, we had, we we had, had to a, distance ourselves again. Yeah, we had to cut ties. Again. After, oh, you didn't hear what happened? You didn't hear what, no. He burned down the Vapor Shades factory. <laughs> he burned it all down. That is crazy. Yeah, he went yeah. over there. Apparently the swirling yeah. on his glasses yeah. was the same, <laughs> and he found out that yeah. each pair was identical, and he burned it all down. <laughs> no, that vapor- would explain the last email oh, that man. he just sent me, actually, now that you mentioned that. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So he called me like as he was on his way to Tampa and he's like, Can you just do like a positioning piece or a quick little liner for me? Kind of like 
Tuttle down and out, um, you know, after, you know, years as a broadcast legend. And then he's been honing his skill. It's kind of like making fun of the Hobo Fish Camp and and the PT Cruiser. And then, oh, then he put it on and they played me on Bubba the Love Sponge. And, I'm sorry. Uh, of course, everybody said it was terrible. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you you hey, when you go to oh, the yeah. mountaintop, sometimes yeah. the gods are ready or are going to spit in your face. That's just what happens. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, when I and when I was watching that, like because I watched the, the Twitch stream, it's like it makes me realize how much you guys are my comfort zone, because just uh, knowing that I was in front of those guys and I don't know, it would be like going over to that weird friend's house that uh, whose parents are weird. You don't want to spend the night at their place. And just just watching the Bubba the Love Sponge show, and and no hats off to him. He's great. He's, he's successful, but. It just made me realize that uh, Tom and Dan definitely my comfort zone because I was watching it and just the dynamics and, and, and the cadence and the way everything goes to show well, it was we're p it was words scary compared to him like yeah. he's a like a, a radio hard, real man, man. like dude yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He like care. He care. Care. that yeah. man will poop in a bucket <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for his show and I will yeah. never do that and t- make his employees that he paying legally yeah. they're, mm-hmm. they're paying FICA yeah on their t- paycheck. he literally they're <laughs> sitting on the t- <laughs> yeah, he's sitting in the turd yeah. shack. Like, That's more I, balls than I ever, uh, ever I, I told Tom, I was like, I will never poop in a Homer bucket and make my employees sit in a poop shack. I, I wish I could, though, because I would. I, that would make me so happy. Well, we Butler, made Butler deserves it. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. But I don't have the balls to do it. <laughs> could you imagine if Butler worked for Bubba Love Sponge, oh, how many poop shacks oh, he's sitting First of all, <laughs> he'd have a shaved head every day. They'd be buzzing <laughs> yeah, his no, haircut, no. Sh- shaving his eyebrows yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Butler doesn't know how good he has it. <laughs> yeah, like, he uh, really does yeah. have it good. I, uh, yeah. I even had had a worse back in the intern days. Like I had to do the mouse traps and yeah, the taser yeah. and the doo doos and the snigs. <laughs> but snigs. When you guys were there, because yeah. you guys did record there a few months ago, did you did you find it like were you, you guys seemed like you're a little bit uh, a little bit unsettled by being there? Did you? Well, it was a few months ago, a year and a half ago. Was two years. Yeah. That was more than two years ago. That was pr- that was a oh, long time that, ago. Yeah. That was like I, three and a half years ago. I don't know. <laughs> it was I, don't know when it, I don't know when it, it was. It smelled like pee pee in there. I want to forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> you Everything was sticky. Uh, yeah. Remember, we had we had Butler answering the phones, remember? When we did the live show there? Are you talking about Ch- Sausage Castle? No, I was talking about uh, no, Bubba. Real ra- oh, you oh, mean Bubba. Oh, Bubba. I was talking about Real Radio. Going back no, to Real Radio. Oh, Real Radio is fine. No, we're talking yeah. about Bubba the Love Sponge. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't get yeah, it. It, it, like, it smells sponge. like pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> there is a hint of pee Well, yeah. that's maybe they made you me left it our pee pee because yeah, I did I spray some pee pee in the corner yeah. before I left. It was what we did. It was a lot, pee-pee. though. After I think they, they have a whole new studio now. We've never seen their new studio. No, I haven't seen the new one, no. But yeah, when we went to the Bubba Love Sponge studio, it was a bizarre warehouse. It was a giant. Yeah. Not only that, it but is a warehouse and it's concrete insulated. <laughs> he it's was crazy. He was, I'm not joking, 20 feet away from me, but <laughs> also in a king throne, 15 feet higher than I was at. And yeah, I, of course, I, in a throne, yeah. and I couldn't see. So I'm behind. Dark. It's always dark yeah. in the in the like. A lot of radio guys like it dark. Like I like it dungeon. light. Put yeah. more yeah, light yeah. on me. So it's it's pitch black. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm behind a bunch of screens. Uh, like all and I can hear like is a shower, stripper it's like pole, saw. neon <laughs> lights. There's like a, a wheel. There's machetes and axes. There's interns like and then so I'm like guitars signed by Seven Dust everywhere. It was. I was freaking out, bro. I was like, oh my god, it was what's a lot happening? To take in. It and I think, but it made me vulnerable. So, like, I would have answered truthfully whatever Bubba Love Sponge is acting like. If he's yelling at me something, I'm just going to uh, do whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, sure. put, it puts you on tilt. <laughs> yeah, and it does it's, put it's you probably on designed tilt. for that. Cause you're, yeah. It, oh, yeah, because you're in his world. That's his yeah, That's yeah. his. Style. That's how you get the good interviews. And look, that's not our style, but that's his style, and it's cool. You that, know, like you, But it is a lot to take in. That's how you get Tila Tequila to sit on the simi. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. A, because they're, you throw them off, and then they're just like, do yeah. whatever you tell them. If you want guys. Gary, the I special was happy. needs boy to wear the banana hat, then you got to have the throne and the shower and the neon and the Yeah, you rock. have to intimidate him <laughs> to yeah. sit on the simian. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, Josh. Um, what else <laughs> okay. you got? Mm. So, um, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, sounds like oh, a, a, now, now, now we sound like every other like Zoom meeting. We're like, oh, now what? <laughs> all right. Well, is that about it? Everybody <laughs> got go? Applebee's, Applebee's, two Applebee's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to spend next winter in Florida. BDMs, 
uh, four bedroom, three bath rental. Hit me up on jcvoiceover.com oh, if you no. get any. If there's any oh, we can do real that. estate rentalmen's. Well, would you be interested whole in, summer? Would you be interested in no, staying in the Tom and March? Do you want to stay in the Tom and Dan uh, Airbnb? Winter. Or, or winter. No, November to March. You don't have to work. So yeah, so I I travel I fly back and forth to work anyway, right? So if my wife is able to transition to working from home, which she's pretty much doing now anyway, homeschool the kids, just spend winter months, you know, where there's no snow, and I'll still travel back and forth out to work, uh, you know, the pipeline where I work. I know a guy. I would hate to see your kids be homeschooled though, because they're cool now. Josh, that <laughs> that brings up a good question because and homeschooled kids they lose their cool when they start wearing the long <laughs> denim dresses and they get the Bucky <laughs> yeah. Larson haircuts yeah, yeah. and they the lose bowl. like people skills. They don't know how to read Not any books cheese. except for the Bible. So, Josh, this <laughs> this brings up an interesting question because. I have this theory that uh, because of uh, everybody's working virtual, not everybody, but a lot of people are just well, working Butler from home. is virtually working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> that we're going to see a lot of people move to Florida just because why live in Nebraska if you could live in Florida? That's their slogan. The, the same. <laughs> if, 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 if your house is the same, you're like, I'll just live where I could drive to the beach an hour. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's always why nice. Why wouldn't you? So. Josh, if you and your wife is now working virtually, would you move to Florida? Because, you know, even Canada's nice, but there is... Why don't you hire him as our that, new that, permanent voiceover guy? <laughs> well, that winter... I like it. That winter stretch for you guys is brutal. So is, yeah. is that enough to make you just live in a different... You know, obviously, you, you got to do whatever it takes. Man, call me greedy, but it's like, I think to really enjoy both climates, you got to do one, you got to do two. You can't just settle in one. So, yeah, it would be like November to March in Florida and then, you know, April to October in Canada. So you do the snowbird. I would have to do both. That's pretty Uh, cool. Yeah, I'd have to do the snowbird. Uh, Although I do, like, it's not as miserable when in the summer here. It is hot as hell. Maybe you guys are different, though. Like, you, it would be, you'd be melting because you're like, oh, my God, 99 degrees. Um, it doesn't, but as you're inside, yeah, it, or you know, in your pool, I whatever. have never understood the people complaining about the heat because I'm the type of person where I can always get cool, but I can never warm up. Maybe that's just my body type, but like when I'm cold, like when we were in Colorado and I wasn't dressed properly, it's miserable. Like we went to dinner, I'm just sitting outside and I have a sweatshirt yeah. on. I was like, this is not good. Well, I shouldn't have done this. But it's like when it's 99 outside, like most Floridians like stay inside or go yeah, to the pool or whatever, but uh, it's not like you have to. Chain, you know, you put on some sort of radioactive suit because the sun's too right, hot. Right, right. It's not that bad. In Canada, like, when you go to work yeah. and it's sub-zero outside, I mean, you can't just run out to your car and get in your car and be fine. It's like, there's a process. No. Like, you gotta it heat hurts, your- too. Yeah. Like I said before, the cold hurts. It's like, ow. You know what I mean? You got to yeah, get yeah, 10 agree. layers on. You got to uh, snuvel. Uh, snuvel. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Uh, this guy's getting worse by the day. I give up. I just, screw you, Josh. What? I blame you. Why? Why? You he didn't make you say snuvel. You, you got me to say it. No. I don't think that's how that works at all. You were doing a rant, and you, you I don't know where you went. And the next thing you know, you're like, they're all there snubbling everyone. <laughs> My it is getting worse. I didn't see what happened. I guess I'll have to. <laughs> no, don't uh, look don't at it. Don't watch it. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. um, we went too far, so now <laughs> yeah, oh, we went too far. Now it, we don't have nowhere just, to go. It's still cold <laughs> as hell there, right? Uh, it's not warm. Yeah, up it yet. was like forty degrees this morning. No, oh my God! God. Oh, you see that? Yeah, I don't I like that. Hat, gloves. Yeah, it's still cold. Yeah, yeah it's full on <laughs> eighty-eight. Here. Yeah, but you're gonna have to buy extra. Like you're gonna have to if you live in Florida and then you live in Canada. That's two whole wardrobes. Mm. You're like, I don't own any coats. I don't own any gloves. I got no boots. Yeah. Also, I got one pair of jeans. Two house uh, money, I feel like uh, that's, that's a big time that's there. That's none of your yeah. business, man. That's, that's his that business. That's money. Oh, yeah, well, okay, yeah. you know. He's like, got that vapor shade. Oh, no, well, not no, now, but right. you're a pipeline, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, whatever it is. What? <laughs> the pipeline. Well, that's what he wore. He's, he's like, laying he's, that pipeline. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's a paramedic on a pipeline, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like any ache. I know. Exactly. Are you a paramedic? Paramedic on a pipeline? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what movie. it is, right? 
<laughs> yes, I am. That's, that's good alliteration. Peter Piper picked a pack of pens. Does Pickle. anybody ever get sucked into the pipeline or blow their hands off or anything? <laughs> like, what? Do you have to do anything? Yeah, do you ever have to bandage somebody's stump hands? Or do you the have worst to, thing you've seen. Or do you just sit on the sidelines like uh, the paramedics that hire for arena football games yeah, and never do guys, anything? Fat yeah. asses. The <laughs> worst, I'm going to answer Sam's question because she asked that. The worst thing I saw was a guy blew himself up with an oxygen tank. Ooh. Like, completely oh. blew himself up? Wait a minute, yeah. hold on. Oh like, blew like himself up Ryan. or exploded? The tank blew up between his legs. Oh! oh. And he lived. Oh, oh he lived! Yay. But he lost his uh, boys? or Everything, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. He's like a Ken doll yeah. now. No, that's when you just do that uh, move in Saving Private Ryan where you just start giving him morphine and then yeah. you just let and him go. That's why I said that, Tom. It, like, it actually, my first thought, when you, you know, you get to that um, that adrenaline scene of Saving Private Ryan where everything kind of just, you know, was like kind of high-pitched ringing. Mm. And my first thought when I saw that was like, this is what World War II medics probably saw quite often, which is weird. That's what That was the first thought I had. Pull it. yourself together and <laughs> run you over like- there and pick up that man. I was gonna say, did you retrieve it and put it on ice or anything, or was it just a? Uh, without going too graphic, it was still there, but <laughs> God, just gone. Just it, moved it, to the it, side. It was no longer going to serve a purpose. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, but other than that, do you just sit around and wait for some calls? <laughs> do you guys make chili. Other than that, it's it's man colds and Netflix and yeah. Oh, okay. That's pretty good though. Yeah. You're watching Netflix, Netflix, <laughs> Netflix. Guys, genitals blown off. Netflix, Netflix, <laughs> Netflix. And then uh, you're just sitting around, and but you're living in like a uh, a remote area, right? For the while you're on duty. Yeah, it's a camp. It's called a camp, but it's it's essentially a hotel. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it's it's a small room with a bed and a bathroom and a sink, and there's just like a small hotel room basically. And they cook for you, they clean for you. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, it's pretty low maintenance. What's a typical dinner if they're cooking something for you? What do you get? So they'll go through a rotation, so everything from beef brisket to, you know, they'll do, like, chicken, stir fries, uh, pizza night. There's always a steak night. There's always a Chinese food night. Nothing like Tom's Chinese food night the other night. But Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Canada's uh, yeah, Tom, really treats their employees well. Tom has the zaniest Chinese nights. Well, These guys promised me pizza parties. Never get it. That's uh, uh, It's because no pizza place is open on Fridays at noon. That's just some oil company's money. They have to have a paramedic on site for insurance reasons. Why so are you belittling it? Oh, no, that's exactly. what, what the, see, well, Josh, Josh, you should tell uh, Tom wh- the only reason why he's here. <laughs> I don't, well, they all know. I, it's a, they don't know. No one knows. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happened here. <laughs> Everyone knows and no one knows. <laughs> like, that's what I heard. Is this the longest segment I've ever done? Is it just me well, or on for like two hours? We got yeah, to yeah. 34 oh, minutes. You, yeah, I'm, are we taking I'm, up too much of your time I'm there, glad Josh? you were feeling it, too. <laughs> I was just <laughs> You, Josh, you remember Back to the Future? There's the point of no return, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, and then Doc Brown said, like, okay, after you, you pass this you. sign, yeah. you cannot, yeah. you're gonna fly off the cliff, so you just gotta hit the gas. Yeah. Got so, it. We got the 36 minutes, and I'm like, gone. We once we hit the point of no return, there's yeah. no going back. Uh-uh. We just have to steam forward. I don't care what it is. I'm saying something. Yeah, yeah. When your gas tank's on empty, punch <laughs> into like we are. The, the bridge is then gonna be built in the future, or we're rocketing off the yeah. cliff. We are the bridge. <laughs> We're building the bridge. So we're just going to ride it out, Josh. We got two more minutes. What else you got? <laughs> Let's talk I hockey. Said, that's snow. Well, we already talked that's hockey and snow. We started, you guys, you know, you guys were going on about uh, the Sean Watson or whatever going on. I was like, I spend far too much time worrying about this segment and putting notes and stuff together when really I don't have to put that many notes no. together. I just do a couple and let you guys go do your thing. Yeah. I kind of chime in once in a while. But I literally ran out of stuff to say today. Nah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's, well, that's where why, you were on the risk. Yeah. Because some days yeah, we're like, what, what else you got? Yeah. <laughs> and you're fired now. Well <laughs> done. You don't always have backup yeah. images that because was a you're going to run out. <laughs> that was a test. You could have had easy ones. Beth, Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, the fight uh, over the weekend. Snoop Dogg is uh, hosting that fight. Oh, is that, he? Uh, yeah, yeah. They got he Snoop. does a great job. He does. It's, it's Snoop Dogg and what's the guy from SNL? Uh, skinny uh, drug addict at one time. Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. Oh, that'll be great. Snoop Dogg and Pete Davidson. That'll be great. They're yeah. both really funny. So that'll. <laughs> yeah. I that might was have a to, unique way to describe Pete Davidson. I might have to buy that. Well, he's a odd 
gentleman, I think. But yeah, he kind of looks like Steve Buscemi got steroids. If yeah, if Snoop Dogg just does his thing, and then uh, yeah. you, you you get uh, what's his face and just make some jokes, and improv a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It'll be great. Better than I can't wait. Better than uh, the regular the Joe Rogan and some former MMA guy that you've never heard of. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, uh, make it uh, goofy and just fun. start getting interesting people to do it. Um, well, Josh, I think we did it. Yeah, we did it. We got Josh. through it. We got through it. <laughs> so, it marathon. so your son, uh, Little Cheese, still has his uh, Twitch channel. Has he made any income yes, from it yet? Twitch.tv slash Little Cheese 437. Check out the Little Cheese show. And if you need any voiceover work done, go to jcvoiceover.com. Has he made some money yet? Uh, like some tips? No. Or? Okay. No. Oh. <laughs> Not anything? You didn't even go in there and prime the pump? Like, yeah. you go dollar there, that you give him, like, 15 purple diamonds or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want him getting soft. I mean, it's got to be hard-earned. You know, it's got to be the real deal. He's going to earn it. Ooh. It's too late for that, Josh. He's already playing video games. You know, He's not the, gonna... Josh is a tough dad, too. You're uh, Maybe you're just a soft dad. Oh yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I mean, he's he's tougher just from being yeah, Canadian. Josh already is like he's I'm not helping. Di- him. I've seen the blown up. D- I didn't see any of that. Yeah, I saw yeah. one dead yeah, person I've, I've on the, the road one. one time, and I freaked out. I've <laughs> seen two dead people, and they were both my parents. So that's <laughs> oh, come pretty. on. I've seen hundreds. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, yeah. Josh's a real man. What's, what's your laughing? favorite? Which one's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> there's there's got to be one that stuck with you a yeah, little there's bit. There's got to be one that every morning you wake up, you're like, ah, I miss old Randy. <laughs> that one. It was the one I told you about. No, oh, no, yeah, the blown yeah, up there. The, yeah. Oh yeah, Game yeah, yeah. Hard to eat your Cheerios. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you remember that? Yeah, that one's uh, hard to go scuba diving after that. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you just go like, ah, oh, you're better like, up here. Yeah, like I can't change the tanks anymore. <laughs> anyway. All right, bye bye, Josh. <laughs> All right, Beavers. Hmm. Oh yeah, Don't, we're supposed to say Beaver. No, oh, no. he hung up on me. Oh, no, son oh, of a bitch! Never again. Oh, we the power oh, back. That's, we're done. Never again. I'm never letting him do that to me again. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm honestly like rattled now. <sighs> okay, bye bye. Thanks so much for listening, and thanks to our sponsors, Gringos Locos, the official taco provider of everything Tom and Dan. And roof problems? Visit securedroofingandrestoration.com for your free roof estimate today. If you miss any Tom and Dan podcast, go to tomanddan.com.